so at his convenience, uh, I probably should have said hi instead. It was actually kind of rude of me to just suddenly spring a challenge on him. Although we had scheduled this, but yeah, good luck. Um, so, uh, this opponent, oh, uh, welcomes the possibility of a bishop exchange. Um, it's not something I'm heavily versed in. I was considering playing third foul rook against this. Um, but we spent so much time studying fourth file rook that perhaps we should just play that here. Um, so let's play a nice solid position instead of playing some wild tactical melee. We can save some of the melee for later. Um, so against this. We don't want to forget to give the king somewhere to go. Um, and we do want to build at least half Mino, if not the full Mino castle. Um, so I'm still deliberating is my silver going to protect this point? Um, hmm. <laughs> okay, so I've defended the bishop. I'm considering bringing the silver toward the center. <sighs> my opponent still welcomes the bishop exchange at any time. Um, and yeah, I'm a bit confused. So I could play my center pawn, I could play uh, my sixth foul pawn. Um, I'm just trying not to forget uh, some of the theory we studied somewhat recently. Um, so if he's preparing to move their rook, or his or her rook to the third file, I should prepare in similar manner. So now it's possible for me to move my rook to the third file, uh, sidestepping whatever attack he may have prepared. Um, this is curious, too. If I had a pawn in hand, I would have some interesting moves here. If, and only if. Um. Hmm. So I'm split. He's built a really strong castle on off the right hand here. And I'm wondering... Well, I certainly have time to build something. Um, just wondering what to build. I tried to transition to opposing rook that doesn't get anywhere. Um, hmm. 
So this knight is the target. I could just put my rook on the third file, move the bishop, and start pushing. What's his attack, I wonder? So if he plays the silver over, um, yeah, I don't know that I have a hard counter to that. I think this is okay. I think if the silver climbs up, I can move the my rook to the third file and then if he starts something aggressive uh my bishop can dodge this is most unexpected yes uh, this does allow him to break into my position but um, first of all, I don't have to take it. Second, if I do take it, um, I'm not sure what he's targeting next. Yeah, no, I don't think this works for him in any way. Uh, because my attack strikes first. an interesting attempt, but I just don't see it. So if he drops a bishop back here, I can hit this rook, the rook moves, I move my rook, he sacks the bishop. Yeah, this is still interesting. Hmm.
So I could hit the bishop, or I could put a knight here blocking the rook. What would he do with the rook? He would tear my position to pieces somehow? I'm not seeing it. This is extremely bizarre, and normally you'd not want to trap your knight like this. However, um, I get tremendous deal of activity right here in the opening. I'm still attacking the lance. Um, okay, this prevents me from doing other bishop tricks. Um... Let's take the lance. It could be useful either for attack or for defense. Let's check the OBS display. Okay, everything is being captured as it should. Yeah. Um, perhaps I've given him much too much to work with. I don't know. <sighs> well, my bishop's not going to find a better square than here. Let's make use of it now. then try to later figure out where the rest of the pieces belong. All right, so he surrounds his own king as he needs to. Um Okay, we'll have the generals defend each other and try to hold this extremely bizarre position for a little while. Um, now he has a general in hand. I don't see what I could do with the general anyway. Hmm, how do I attack 
Where do I attack? Such a strange position. Um... But yeah, I think his weakness is actually over here. Uh, my knights do want somewhere to go. And once the snipe moves, I can threaten to drop the lance right here. Perhaps I needed to move this knight earlier to make way for a lance. Oh. Well, that's all theoretical anyway. Um, so what do we do now? Yeah, we've got to make use of our pieces somewhere, some when, somehow. <laughs> Release the Kraken. Yeah. All right. Um... Hmm. Oh, okay, I see his next threat. Um, yeah, well, let's continue centralizing my horses while taking stuff. Um... This traps his rook. Um, I assume only temporarily. Oh, but this makes way for his rooks to go to the other file. Ah, oh, this is strange, because I was considering moving the knight there anyway. Yeah, let's just slowly approach the castle. We're taking the scenic route, the one where we take all the pawns on our way there. Um, along with anything else we might encounter. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, he he does enjoy a good rook. Um, not sure what he's going to do. I mean, he obviously intends to promote it, but uh, after he promotes the rook, what's next? Um, Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh through the ice and snow. All right. And just bring all the pieces toward the king. All right, so I can't put a pawn behind my gold, not legally. Um, 
He's got quite the cannon lined up there. Um. Hmm. We're going to pretend that this is a good move and that I had planned it in advance. Yeah, no, of course he should pawn drop or drop something on the head of my pieces here to slow me down. Um, but that's going to take him turns to capture my stuff. So um, we're just going to keep marching toward the king. Pretend that everything's fine. As long as, well, I'm giving him a gold, unfortunately. My theory was that as long as he doesn't have a gold, I'm okay. Well, I just gave him a gold, so that doesn't hold anymore. Um, so yeah, this is going to be difficult. Um, but yeah, we're just going to keep taking stuff. That's the plan. Take all the things. Um. Yeah, how can I say no to this? How can I say no to taking all the things? I do not understand. We're just gonna continue taking all the things. That's the plan. If we have to, we'll open this diagonal so the horse can get back into my castle. If we have to. Um, Presently, he's out of gold. Um, so my big, super big brain plane here was I was going to bring this silver back to defend the gold. Um, not sure if that's merited. Uh, every additional piece I get in hand by the time it's my turn to attack uh, will help me crack his castle one move faster. Right, so he spent another turn moving this. So that gives me a free turn to just capture here. And then I follow up by capturing the gold that protects his king. And I don't know if I've missed something, but somehow it's my turn again. Um, how do I not have mate? Like, surely, in some universe, I must have mate here, right? I want to surround the king first, and then deliver the mating move. So, we have 
uh, horse to 4-4 four, four is the threat. Gold to 7 eighths, the other threat. Um, Right. So if I move the king over, silver drop, knight takes, they're out of checks. Wait, no. King over, lance drop, knight takes, silver drop, king takes. Again, out of checks. They needed a gold here, and they don't have a gold. Which means it's my turn to attack. I missed that. That's relevant. Uh, not catastrophic yet, but did have me extremely panicked for an instant here. Maybe it is catastrophic. Um, I had been counting on this move. Yeah, no, I've messed this up. Hmm. I see. Okay. Well, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? Uh, how much of a problem is it? That's fatal. All right. Um, hmm. What do we do now? Yeah, no, I've messed this... Yeah, all right. Good game. Uh, well played. Wow. That was uh, something. This here. Okay. Um... Okay, where does this go? Oh! Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, I should hand over the... Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. So wait. Yes, having the gold here does make all the difference. 
<laughs> Poor Lily. Yeah. I mean, for Lily, this is heartbreak. For me, this is just Saturday. This is just how things go. Uh... <laughs> so many Japanese viewers. Uh, I guess we got a lot of fans over there, don't we? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, wow. That is, yeah, I mean, it's a pity I missed that. Um, that would have been a really nice find. A solid, well, it would be a way to win over a 2-Don at the end there. Um, so yeah, obviously I can't take the bishop. So, yeah, I completely missed the uh, drop on 5-5 five five that, like, refutes my thing. Yeah, like, this... Surely I'm winning if... Um, uh, there's... Oh! Oh, okay, so I have to sack here, and the king escapes? Um... Yeah. Interesting. Um, well, hang on. No, I get a lance there. Well, no, the king does escape as indicated. Never mind. Yeah, so... Okay, yeah. Uh, this is still the way for me to attempt to play this. No, the lance... Well... Interesting. Um... Problem is, they block, and... Oh. Well, okay. No, you're exactly right. Um, in this case, the lance does win. No, you can't do that. If you drop the gold, you get the same thing that happened in the game. Um, wow. That is cool. Gotta practice those sume. Jeez. Yeah, if you give up the if you need the gold in the end, which I completely missed. Um some hundreds of games later I will understand how to do these kinds of mates, but right now it's a bit much. Uh Yeah, it was definitely exciting. <laughs> Boy, did we get a viewership. Um, you know, maybe tomorrow. Uh, well, eh, it's too late at that point. Yeah. It'd be interesting to have folks familiar with Japanese be able to get the sentiment of what they're commentating, although I think it has to do with this crazy mating attack that I had embarked upon, but um, which accidentally does work because my opponent had played a bit too quickly. You see, they still have eight minutes on the clock. I'd been in Byoyomi for I don't remember how long. Not that long, I don't think, but I think they were just over eager to win the game um, and made some errors. So yeah, this way the, well, the king doesn't escape here either because I have just like way too much gold. It's, um, mm, I don't know about this one. This king, oh, I'm sorry, the knight there. Oh my goodness. Wow. Jeez, we're looking at all the exciting game variations. 
Oh, I had only seen like a tenth of this. Japan did just celebrate their uh, national shogi month or day or something. Um, so I guess uh, all the new fans as well as all the old fans are looking for something to do um, this Thanksgiving weekend. So yeah, maybe that had something to do with like it's just a break between um, their November shogi celebration of the year and whatever events they had planned in December. So we just happen to have whatever spectators are available for this kind of thing. Um, eight, seven, something, something. Oh, thanks for the game. And then now, what's this? Okay. Entirely fair. Um, yeah, cool. All right, so... So telling him that, yeah, it's totally fine for him to depart. Um, I expect... Yeah, everybody... Uh, has something to do. Okay, wow. So, maybe that was the Koshin fan club. Use the templates. Yes, no, you're right. Yeah, using the templates would be appropriate, but we were just flying through all the endgame variations. So, now we have time to actually look at the game from the beginning, you and all of us. Um... So, yeah, I'll punch some of this into... Let's see, what comments have I missed? I'll punch some of this into Shogi Gui. Oh, <laughs> I know what letter that is. That's the A letter. The reason I know that is because I played... Um, I learned Japanese to survive Katakana Warrior or whatever it is. So this... Ah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm playing a two-don. The expectation's not for me to win the game. <laughs> Even though we did do some pre-game prep. Um, yeah, so... This is probably good. This is probably dubious, as all get out. Um, and it probably would have made more sense for me to just... Suck it up. And uh, see where we end up here. So, yeah, this could have been interesting. All right, what comment have we missed now? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this probably would have been fine. Also, like, had I been using the sidebar translations, um, Half the things I would have said, I would have immediately contradicted myself a second later. So, yeah, maybe that's the Koshin fan club. Okay, yeah, I'm not a fan of this pawn drop. I mean, it does allow the rook to move to 1-4 uninhibited. Which I think just makes the game more interesting. But, yeah, supposing that this rook 1-4 were a good idea, it doesn't really stop me from preventing it. So, the critical question is, do I even believe what my opponent is planning? And I don't. So, yeah, if I were cowardly, uh, taking the pawn would be the way to go. But I think I'm still better after my move. So, um, but yeah, no, definitely uh, promoted bishop takes pawn is possible. I think it just amplifies my woes, but... Uh, Rook could be a useful piece. It's like, stick on their back rank and... Anyway, I didn't need a Rook. I think maybe here, I was just stupid. Like, this probably would have been sensible. With the idea of just taking here and here. Not sure why I rejected that. Um, yeah. I 
don't at all understand why I rejected that, because that looks very strong. Also taking here and maybe sacking for a gold or something could be fun. Like, there's so many fun ways to play this. I'm sure if you stick this into any engine, it will suggest lots and lots of ideas. Instead, I put... well... Yeah, there's... I could push the center pawn, too. Maybe that's appropriate. Um... Oh, uh, I don't know whether this is something I should submit for Shogi Harbor to review. Because if I do submit this, I am going to get roasted for this one. We both could have played better. Uh, that's the most mild way I can express um, my disappointment with my own moves. Like, I'm not super disappointed in the outcome, because it was an exciting game. <laughs> but holy heck, the moves were so unsound this game. I've got three golds and a silver in hand. I should not lose this, ever. Um, so, yeah, and then we have all the variations like I pointed out. But, um, is there anything else worth manual? So I did consider this, too. Which could have been interesting. Because um, now I can hit this gold. And golds can't move backwards. So this could have been an interesting thing to do. Uh, gives him a bishop, but I don't see how he uses it right away. Um, like he'd want to do this, and he'd want to put the bishop here. Uh, maybe this is more complex than I think it is. I don't know. Silver here. Um, am I safe enough to play such a move? And second, does it actually help me with this? Um, yeah, I'm thinking my whole suggestion of sacking my bishop is not quite worth it. Although I can, like... Yeah, you're right, I could push this edge pawn and stuff. This is possible. Um, there's got to be some better way. Maybe what I did was best, actually. This does strike fastest with the most force. Wait. Wait a sec. Did I miss something dumb here? Um... So, I have no pieces to block on the back rank with at the moment. Um, yeah, so taking this gives me a useful defender. There we go. Attack over. <laughs> uh, it's so anticlimactic, but this could have been it. <laughs> this is such a terrible move. But it works. But, um, yeah, no, the thematic thing. You have to go for the attack. I'm just amused that my cowardly retreat there might also work. Um, yeah. And this, yeah, this is good. I'm, I'm attacking very forcefully. Yeah. Um... Now, I think we need to save this for the bishop check that was demonstrated in the post-game analysis. Um, plus, they could just block with the, any piece on this diagonal. Well, I could sack. It, uh, I don't know. But their attack is speeding up every time I exchange a piece. Yeah, this bishop move could maybe work. Because it would cut off the king's future escape. Um, this is probably dumber than I thought it was. Um, like, just taking here is probably best. Oh, what comment have we missed now? Silverback, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, during the game, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna, like, Put some kind of fortress in the way so that his rooks can't break in. Uh, it didn't actually help. 
I think it slowed him down a move the way it got played in the game because he pushed the token over. So like it didn't lose me anything other than later he got a silver. Um, but yeah, just taking here just seems to be very, very strong. Although, I don't know that I have mate. Yeah, the silver does a great job hemming in the king. I need this later. Oh, I don't know how to analyze this. Um, I need to work on simpler sume first. Because whatever could have been possible in this game is light years ahead of where I'm studying at the moment. Uh, but yeah, to fill in the picture for the complete beginner here, um, so I'm basically out of checks in this final position. If I check with the silver like I'd intended to do, the king escapes. And if I check this way, uh, the king escapes this way anyway. So uh, this is why I conceded at the very end that, yeah, I mean, there are there is one more check. And unfortunately, I am out of checks and my opponent has four generals and other pieces in hand. So this was the reason for the resignation. Um, so, yeah, I hope that. Um, OK. Uh, his opening was pretty standard, by the way. Yeah. It did look somewhat rec uh, recognizable. So, like, uh, up to this point, this looked kind of sort of familiar. Even though I... So, to me, like, I think this is indicated. Um... I'm not really sure. I mean, another idea might be this. So I was surprised to see the knight sacrifice. Um, so uh, hopefully this game was exciting, entertaining, enlightening, or something to uh, our viewership, because I'm still confused. And it's entirely fine that he has to go do whatever it is he's doing on Sunday. Um, uh, yeah, I mean... Sure, part of the object of the teaching ladder is to teach, and we saw a wide variety of endgames demonstrated um, by so many strong players right at the end there. So, uh, we did have some learning going on, um, although it was a bit non-traditional. Oh, confused about, like, the entire game, that's all. <laughs> uh, yeah. My opponent had to go, which is unfortunate, although he had, uh, prior to going, we did take a look at the very end of the game. Um, but yeah, the reason I'm confused here is just because I haven't studied enough, or just maybe have studied it and have completely forgotten, which is bad. But um, you know, later on, some of the positions we got were kind of interesting. Um, so I did some really slow, stupid, dumb moves trying to, like, prevent him from promoting. And um, then I decided it's okay for him to have two dragons as long as I can start an attack over here. Um, so, uh, yeah, we got some exciting positions here. And I think we both misplayed it. Uh, after this, so. Yeah. Yeah, this knight drop trying to hold on to everything was just way too heavy. And slowed down whatever attack I eventually did for him. And at this point, I think I'm better. Um, despite not having a rook. Like, I don't think my attack is any slower than his, but I don't know. Just let him promote. What's the harm? Promote two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Considering how the game went, and how many errors it took for me to get back into the game, um, and also this, like, later on I needed the silver here, 
And so this is a wasted move trying to hold on to my castle. Um, like, I should just snap the silver and go after the king. And if it mates, it mates. And if not, I got coming what was coming to me. Um, but I'm pretty sure at this point, with considerable help from my opponent, I've actually gotten back into the game. <sighs> um, see, I guess my regret, um, if there is one, is that just this game was just a 15 minute game. Uh, right? If I remember right, this 15 plus 60 second Byoyomi, um, which was not enough time to figure out what was going on here. Um, I could say I regret some of my moves, but that'd be untruthful because that would mean like I haven't learned anything here. No, I think I have learned some things that I should have known, but um, yeah, it was exciting. Um, so, yeah, and then our spectators showed up at uh, after the game. Uh, full, Several strong players from Japan had helped Koshun uh, look at this game. And we were looking at all these endgame uh, variations. So, um, yeah, I'll put this game into Shogigui at some point. It'll point out stuff. Uh, rather, the engine Giko will point out a number of variations that we both missed. But... Yeah, the basic idea is that um, I just need to have some more optimism in my own attack and not be so terrified of um, whatever my opponent is scheming. This one pawn drop might have been fine, but all this panic that followed was just not called for. Oh, okay, at the very end, after the king runs to 7-7. Seven, seven, um, so, a horse drop after the king runs to 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's see. Or horse check, not drop. Uh... Yeah, so this one, um, I think this ends up similar to what happened in the game. They just stick a piece on 5-5. Five, five. Um, but that said, like here, no, here I have a very strong position. Um, I think there are spectators are saying this and if the king runs then this is mate um so yeah we saw a number of variations like this uh, after the game Um, yeah, and the game, uh, my attack just fizzled out, which was quite unsatisfying. I just couldn't read for the life of me, which was really disappointing. Um... So, yeah, I am still gradually working on Sume, but I need a lot of work on this. <laughs> yeah, I suppose uh, I might as well play a game. Uh, for the sake of those watching the analysis uh, for this video, thanks for watching. And thanks to all who spectated and helped with the game analysis. All right, um, I guess we'll put this into Shogigui.
we'll analyze it later. Um, it's not going to point out anything remotely intelligible, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I need to manage my time better, and to manage my time better, I need to stop playing dumb moves. Stop playing dumb moves and you have some confidence in what I'm doing and that sort of thing. So, I don't need to read everything to know, and I should know by this point. Um, it's okay to allow some of your opponent's pieces to promote, as long as you still have a castle and you can do something to attack their castle. Um, that's where the excitement is in this game. And I just didn't believe and thought I had something better, and I didn't. But also the pawn drop itself might be dumb. Like, okay, yes, he's promoting. Yes, I'm quite mad that I have nowhere to promote my rook. I can't even activate it anywhere. It's blocked by all my pieces. So trading my rook for a bishop might be a good thing to do. Um, but... Yeah, the idea that like somehow it's going to prevent him from promoting was just not worth it. Oh. Wow, really? Jeez. Okay, so after the king 7-7, seven, seven, uh, not sure if we're considering this position or just the one you initially suggested. Um, but yeah. Um, horse takes, pawn takes, gold, 8-7, king takes. So yeah, you're not talking about here. Talking when the king ran to 8-7, or 7-7. Seven, seven. After Lance 5-5, five, five. okay. It's this one. This capture, this capture. Um, gold takes, oh, 6-7. For some reason, I misread that as 8-7, which makes no sense. King takes... Uh, gold drop, 5-7. Yeah, this is one of the things we looked at. And yeah, this was the surprise to me. Like, oh! Yeah, because it's a lance, it just happens to be exactly the right piece that we need. And yeah, they considered any inner position. And lance takes, king takes. Um, I think there was silver check here. Yeah. And mates. Yep, so. Yeah, that's a nice find. That would have been an amazing way for me to defeat a Tudon. So yeah, even when I had everything in my favor, I still... And the worst part about this is that my intuition said this move, and I just rejected it. I'm like, no, this makes no sense. I have no time to read this. If this is there, it's too deep for me to find. Uh, this was the right move. But uh, I need to practice easier Sume first. So, yeah. But yeah, with all their pals watching, that would have been a really elegant thing to just pull out of uh, a hat. Um, yeah. And if nothing else, we had a fun game. Um, 
So yeah, Shogi Harbor's program starts in, what, nine hours? Maybe I should get some rest before then.